Hey everyone, Tactics here, bringing you another Season 2 Mythic Plus Guide, this time looking at a fan favorite returning dungeon from Battle for Azeroth, Freehold. In this video, I'll be going over everything you need to know about the dungeon, including important abilities to interrupt, things you'll want to stop with CCs, changes to the dungeon over the course of the PTR, and much more. I'll also be including a simple, pug-friendly route that you can use at the beginning of the season, and once MDT is updated, I'll drop that string down in the description below for you to import if you so choose. I'll be putting out guide videos just like this one for all eight dungeons this season, with my Underrock guide already available on my channel if you want to check that out. On top of that, I'll also be putting out advanced guides for all eight dungeons, showing off some tips and tricks that we use in high keys to get them done quickly and easily. So if that sounds like something you're interested in seeing, make sure you do subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Otherwise, let's begin with some things you'll face near the start of the dungeon, and the first is actually something from the boss himself. When you actually walk into the dungeon, Sky Captain Craig will be flying around above you, and while you fight the trash leading up to him, he will occasionally shoot down vile bombardment puddles at random players. This leaves behind a little bloop on the ground that'll slow you for 40% of your movement speed and deal ticking damage while you're inside of it, so keep that in mind, you'll have to constantly deal with these bombardments while also dealing with all of the trash mobs. Speaking of what those trash mobs, the first one you'll have to face is an Iron Tide Enforcer. This is a Lieutenant mob, so it's not seeable, and he has a random target frontal ability in Brutal Backhand. This is very dangerous, so make sure you do avoid it. Uh, it will not follow you once it locks into place, so should be quite easy to dodge. They also have a new ability moved over from a previous mob and called Shattering Bellow. This is a 40-yard physical AoE that will also interrupt any spell casting, so just be aware of it. Make sure you stop casting when this goes off. These enforcers are also joined by some dogs, Iron Tide Mastiffs. They have a random target physical hit and slow and crippling bite. This isn't too dangerous on its own. However, when combined with the Bestial Wrath and Rage, the mob does at 40% HP, they can get a little bit dangerous. So make sure you either soothe that Bestial Wrath when it comes out or stop those crippling bites when they get dangerous. Iron Tide Corsairs are also in this area. These guys are relatively uh, easy to deal with. They only have a single ability in Saber Rattle, which is also stoppable, just like that Crippling Bite. And this only hits the tank for physical damage, so even if you don't stop it, it's actually not too dangerous since lots of tanks have ways to deal with physical damage. Iron Tide Crack Shots are also in this area. This is a fully ranged mob, so it can be a bit of a pain to group up if you don't stack on top of it or LOS it, which I'll talk about in the rooting at the end. Uh, and these guys have a single ability as well, an Azerite Grenade. This shoots an 8-yard circle at a random player. Pretty scary if you stand in it, so recommend not doing that. And you can either dodge this ability or instead stop the mob with a CC, and that will prevent it from going off as well. The last mob in this area are the Iron Tide Bone Saws. These guys have two abilities. The first is Healing Bomb, which is an interrupt or stoppable if you so choose. And this puts a magic hot on a random enemy here, healing them up over the course of that hot. And this is also a magic hot, like I just mentioned, so you can purge it if you miss the kick and the stop. Their other ability is actually something you do want to keep out for. It is the Filthy Blade. This has no cast time currently on the PTR, and this just hits your tank for physical damage again, but the real dangerous part here is that it also puts a stacking disease that reduces your healing taken by 20%. So having a disease to spell for these guys is really, really nice. Otherwise, tanks beware, you'll be taking less healing, especially if you do a pull with multiple of these guys, as it will stack up. Once you've killed the trash guarding his arena, Sky Captain Craig will fly down and you'll be able to engage him directly, and this boss has received quite a few changes from BFA. Initially, his mounted phase is the exact same. He'll occasionally use his pistol shot ability to deal fire damage to a random player, and also will sometimes charge at a random player, dealing damage within an 8-yard radius, so be sure you avoid that swirly. Once you push the boss below 75% HP, he jumps off his mount, and this is where the hard part starts. His mount Sharkbait will fly away, and that vile bombardment ability you had to deal with on your way to the boss again is happening, shooting puddles at random players you just want to move away from. Sharkbait will also attempt to dive bomb random players, appearing on the edge of the arena somewhere, and just charging in a straight line across it after a short delay, dealing a ton of nature damage if you are hit here, so be sure you avoid it. In terms of what 
Krag does in the meantime, most of his damage is coming from the Azerite Powder Shot ability, which has seen some significant changes over the course of the BTR. For those who don't know, this ability will target a random player, do some damage to them in a large cone, and anyone else in that area as well. To reduce the one-shottiness of this ability from BFA, they've actually reduced the initial damage on the blast and added in a magic dot that you can dispel, of course, to compensate. For those that played back in BFA, there were also a couple ways to cheese this ability. One was outranging it as it was just a 30-yard cone, and the other was by LOSing it using the edge of the arena. Both of these cheeses no longer work. The cone is now 60 yards long, and it ignores LOS, so don't worry about that. You do just have to kind of eat these applications, unless, of course, we find something else, and then I'll let you know. Outside of the powder shot, the only thing to be aware of is his revitalizing brew cast, which is interruptible, and if you don't interrupt it, well, the boss is going to heal a lot, so make sure you do kick this ASAP, and it also has the added benefit of falling to the ground when you do kick it, allowing a player to pick it up and get a hot of their own, but usually it's not really worthwhile. In terms of strategy to handle this boss, you want to make sure that your entire group fans out so that multiple players don't get cleaved by a single cone, which would result in course of you having multiple magic dots going out, which could be hard for you to deal with depending on your group comp. Ideally, I think we had our melee fan out towards the edge of the room, while ranged players were fanned out slightly towards the center of the room, just to make sure players weren't overlapping with those cones. Moving towards the second boss, you'll also notice a pretty significant change to the dungeon, as you no longer need to complete any of the rotating RP elements in order to spawn the Council of Captains, and on top of that, mobs that were previously allied with the same captain as you are no longer friendly to you and they will no longer run away once you defeat that second boss, meaning the trash is just in general more consistent from run to run. That doesn't even take into account that there is no longer a captain rotation on that second boss, but I will talk about that when we actually get to it. Meanwhile, let's talk about the trash in this area. Uh, there's the Cut Water Duelist. These guys have a single ability in Duelist Dash. This puts a little swirly near a random player, and after a short delay, they will charge to it, and they will stun anyone in between them or their target, so it's not just a swirly you need to dodge. This ability is stoppable, of course, though, so you can just prevent it from going off entirely. Iron Tide Oarsmen are also in this area. These guys are lieutenant mobs, similar to those enforcers at the beginning, so you cannot stop them in any way as you see them. Uh, their ability, Sea Spout, will spawn swirlies underneath every single player that you just need to move out of. Otherwise, it deals very, very heavy damage, and if you don't die, you get shot up into the air, so it's really not too fun. Bilge Rat Padfoots are also in this area. They have a single ability again in Plague Step, and similar to that Filthy Blade, it has no cast time, and it puts a pretty nasty diseased dot onto the player that also, of course, has a major healing reduction. So again, disease dispels are going to be pretty good in this dungeon. This also has no cast time, so you don't really have a way to avoid it or predict who it's going to go on, so be careful there. Vermin trappers patrol around this area along with their soggy ship rats. These guys have a single ability in rat traps, which again, they just throw out at every single player. And if you do touch them after they activate, it'll deal a dot for five seconds and root you in place. So note that if you do accidentally step on these, you can clear it with something like freedom or tiger's lust. These ones are also lieutenants, so you cannot stop this ability either. The ship rats accompanying them also have an ability in Scabrous Bite that just goes on the tank, and it's a stacking 10% healing reduction, so as you can imagine, if you don't kill these very quickly, it can get out of hand fast. Luckily, they have very, very low health and are CCable, unlike the Trapper, so it shouldn't be too long before you kill these if you ever end up pulling them. There's a bunch of non-aggressive mobs in this area as well. None of them have really significant abilities, and actually a bunch of them also don't give any count. The only one I want to mention are the Bilge Rat Swabbies. These guys have a single ability in Slippery Suds, which is stoppable, but it will put a 30 second debuff on you that makes you stunned for two seconds whenever you jump. So be aware of that if you ever accidentally pull one of these guys uh, and you get a big long debuff on you and you're wondering what it is, just don't jump. Getting stunned is definitely bad. Moving towards the boss's area a little bit, there are a few other mobs down here. You've got the Cut Water Knife Juggler. These guys have a single ability again in Ricocheting Throw. This is also stoppable, though the cast is quite fast, and this just shoots a physical dagger at a random player that will bounce to nearby players, so you want to make sure you have a little bit of a spread on here, or like I said, you try and stop that cast. 
Builds Rat, Brine Scales are also down here, and these guys have a couple casts to go off. Water Bolt is a random target Frost hit that you want to make sure that you interrupt, and Frost Blast is a random targeted Frontal Cone that is both kickable and stoppable, and this is very, very lethal, so make sure this cast never goes off. Along with them, you'll find some Black Tooth Brutes. These guys have a single non-casted ability in Earthshaker, which is just a four yard AOE around the mob. So mainly, if you ever see a Black Tooth Brute in a pack, try and stay on the opposite side of the pack or just at max melee range from them and you'll be able to avoid this damage. Otherwise, tanks is a relatively small amount of physical damage to you, so it's not too big a deal. Bilgerat Buccaneers are also down in this area. who we'll have a single ability in Going Bananas, and as you would expect, they kind of go bananas when this goes off. It's a Blade Storm effect in a 5-yard radius, which lasts for 6 seconds, and is stoppable if you want to drop a stun or any other kind of CC on them so that you can walk in and fight them. Once you've cleared this bar area, you'll see the Council of Captains boss fight, and as I mentioned previously, what used to be a rotating duo of bosses is now static, as you will always be fighting your Dora and Raul, and always be allied with Jolly. When it comes to mechanics, the random target damage will be coming from Yodora's Powder Shot, which is a single player for a decent chunk of physical damage. She'll also occasionally leap to one side of the room and shoot off six frontal blasts of Grape Shot, slowly rotating as she does so. Similar to Sky Captain Craig, this ability used to be extremely one-shotty back in BFA, but they've decreased the damage significantly in favor of adding in a stacking dot each time you're hit by the shot. However, note that this one is not a magic dot, it's not dispellable, you just kind of have have to eat it, so you still want to avoid this cone as best you can. When it comes to Raul, he'll throw out a blackout barrel at a random player, which will disorient them until the barrel is destroyed or removed, so make sure you either swap to these or use an ability that clears movement impairing effects to get rid of it without needing to lose any boss damage. He will also use a barrel smash around himself in a 10 yard radius, which deals extremely heavy physical damage and knocks back anyone hit, so make sure you do get out of these when the cast starts. You do have a couple allies as well with you during this fight. Jolly himself will sometimes buff players with Tradewind's Vigor, providing a 40% move speed buff for 10 seconds. More importantly though, the bartender will occasionally throw out drinks throughout the encounter, which you can stand in and give yourself a buff. If you stand inside any of these brown circles that appear on the ground, you'll gain an 8 second buff, either 30% crit if it was the confidence boosting brew, or 30% haste if it was the invigorating brew. That's a lot of stats, so your entire party wants to make sure that they stand in these brown circles whenever possible. Note that there is also one negative brew in a green swirly thrown out by the bartender. This one's called caustic brew, and this instead applies an 8 second dot to anyone inside of it. Notably though, you can actually tank the bosses inside these green swirlies and they will have that dot applied to them. Also, at least on the PTR, the bosses standing in the brown circles did not give them the benefits of the positive brew. Back in BFA, it did give them this benefit, so that may be unintended, but at least for now, you don't need to worry about not tanking them in the brown circles, and you can just try and put them in the green circles for some extra damage. Once you've defeated the council, there's a ton more pirates between you and the third boss. Most of them familiar, the ones I just described between the first and second boss, but there are a couple new ones in this area. The Black Tooth Scrapper is one of them. Them. These guys will use Blind Rage, just a fixate effect on a random target. It'll increase their physical damage by 50% in the process, but it can be soothed off of them or stopped off of them as well. Otherwise, it will just last 8 seconds and they will go wailing on whoever their fixate target is. Cutwater Harpooners are also in this area, and as you would expect, they have a Harpoon ability, and this Dragging Harpoon will target a ranged player within 30 yards and do a physical hit to them and yoink them into the pack. So just be aware, whenever these guys are in the pack, you want to play relatively closer to it, just so you don't get yoinked from all the way across the room. Iron Tide Crushers are the big giant guys in this area. They have a couple abilities you want to avoid. The first is Boulder Throw. This is a 10 yard swirly thrown at a random target, so just avoid that. The second is Ground Shatter, which is a 10 yard AoE around the mob itself, so make sure you step out of that. Eventually you'll find yourself in an arena known as the Ring of Booty. This is a pretty heavy RP part of the dungeon, so it's quite beneficial if you have someone able to, to either stealth, invis, mind tooth, whatever it is ahead, 
and start this RP while you're clearing the trash. After the first part of the RP, you'll need to interact with Lightning the Pig three times in order to begin the second part of the RP. And once the second part of the RP is done, you'll be able to face the mini boss Ludwig von Tortolin, who outside of being very, very healthy, only has one ability in Shell Bounce, which shoots out a shell at a random player that does, as you would expect, bounce around the arena, damaging and knocking back anyone hit. After defeating Ludwig, the third and final part of the RP will start, after which you'll finally be able to engage the boss, Prothak the Shark Puncher. A very important aspect of this fight are the chum puddles that the crowd throw into the arena, which will slow you by 50% of your inside of them, but can be used as a distraction against the sharks Trothak will throw at random players. When thrown, these sharks deal nature damage in an 8 yard AoE around their target, and will begin to flail towards the nearest player, dealing nature damage to anyone that gets within 5 yards of them. Know that because they fixate the nearest player, you can have people responsible for baiting these sharks and then kiting them after the initial throw happens. In terms of where you want to kite them, that's where those chum puddles become handy, as whenever a shark passes over one, it will wait 3 seconds on top of it, consuming it, before continuing its chase. A maximum of 2 sharks can be out at any one time, and after a bit of time, Trothek will charge to the shark that has been active the longest, and rearm himself, retaching the shark to his arm, and dealing physical damage to anyone in its path. This charge actually hits quite hard, so you really want to make sure that you're positioning yourself such that you're never between Trothak and the shark that he's going to charge towards next. Outside of that, Trothak will sometimes use a Blade Storm effect called Shark Tornado, wonder what that's a reference to, which will deal physical damage to anyone within 9 yards of him for 3 seconds, so just make sure you back out away from the boss when this happens. He'll also occasionally slap a melee player with a Ripper Punch, this deals physical damage and applies a pretty nasty 12 second bleed to them, so they will need some uh, healing, love, or a defensive pop when that goes out. Once you've defeated Trothak, you can make your way across another long bridge towards Harlan Suite. Just like before, you'll see some familiar pirates and some new ones. Irontide Stormcallers are one of those new ones. These guys have a lightning bolt attack, which is a tank targeted nature hit, and it can be interrupted, so make sure you do that to reduce the tank damage going out. They also have a Thundering Squall channeled ability, which is a 10 yard AoE around the mob, which you can kick, you can stop, and of course you can just run out of. Iron Tide Ravagers are also in this area. They have a single cast in Painful Motivation. This will put a 50% damage increase and rage effect on one of their allies, but they also lose 2% of their HP per second over the 8 second duration. So technically, if your tank or whoever can actually live the extra damage, it is technically faster to kill the pack to leave these up, but you may just want to stop, interrupt, or soothe this effect regardless. Iron Tide Buccaneers are in this area as well. These guys have a tank targeted frontal attack, and this is only a four yard frontal, so it's actually quite short, and the tank can actually back up out of it as well because it will not follow them. The frontal will be channeled during the duration, even if the tank backs up, and if you don't want to do that, you can just stop it as well. Iron Tide Officers are the final mob in this area. These guys are lieutenant mobs once again, so you cannot CC them. They have a very, very dangerous tank hit, an oiled blade. This is a fire hit on the tank that applies a 75% healing reduction to the tank for 8 seconds. Luckily, it is a magic dispel, so you can get that off of them ASAP, and you want to do that for sure. 75% on this healing is a lot, so get rid of that quickly. They also have the same painful motivation cast the Iron Tide Ravagers does, uh, but obviously you will not be able to stop it on them because they are CC immune. When you've gotten through the last of the pirates, you'll be able to engage Harlan's suite atop his piles of gold. This boss has also been reworked a fair bit, including a full redesign to the Swiftwind Saber ability, which now shoots out a singular tornado after a delay, dealing heavy nature damage to anyone caught in the line and knocking them up. So it's very important that you dodge these. Also, it did seem to appear that at least these single tornadoes were aimed only at the tank, but just be aware of it in case you know, he does a little spin or something like that. There's also a brand new ability called a Whirling Dagger, which throws a dagger at a random player, and it deals a moderate physical hit along with a pretty large three second bleed to them. So be aware of that as well. That's some extra party damage for the healer to deal with. 
On top of those new abilities, there's also two returning ones. Cannon Barrage will target a random player. It shoots five barrages over the course of four seconds at their location and then deals massive fire damage if you're caught in any of those five yard swirlies, leaving behind a fire puddle that also serves as partial area denial just for a short amount of time. Iron Tide Grenadiers also spawn intermittently, attempting to run towards players from that pile of gold to wherever those players are, and then explode and deal damage to people within 8 yards. Ideally, you just kind of tap these with a CC when they spawn, and then they'll blow up harmlessly on their own. Outside of these abilities, Harlan will buff himself with his loaded dice throughout the fight, increasing the number of targets his abilities hit at 60% HP, and then increasing the frequency of those same abilities at 30% HP. Note that at 30% HP, he will also gain 100% increased attack speed and damage taken, so you can actually burst him down quickly before you're overwhelmed. When it comes to the target increase at 60% HP, Swiftwind Saber now shoots out 5 lines in random directions, Whirling Dagger will now ricochet to all non-tank players, and similarly, Cannon Barrage will aim at all non-tank players, so this fight becomes very hectic very quickly near the end of it. With the dungeon abilities covered, let's go over a simple pug-friendly route here in MDT that will be helpful for the beginning of the season, and I'll link that down in the description below if you want to import it for yourself. The goal here, again, is to just make this as easy and general as possible, uh, just for when you're learning the dungeon so there's no skips, uh, nothing too complicated, no giant insanely difficult to accomplish pulls, just easy peasy, and because of that, note that if you want to do any of those edits for yourself feel free you can combine pulls as you see fit you can add in skips as you see fit but for now this is just going to be something very very simple and easy so off the top here notice this is a relatively large pull but that's because there's a bunch of corsairs here and as i mentioned these guys don't really do much so really the only relevant thing here outside of the enforcer who has that frontal is that one crack shot and that one bone saw here uh, after that you can hug the wall here Pull these four guys, and you can LOS behind this pillar here to group them all up over here. Similarly, you can go run out and do this three pack. And note that you do have to kill this number three pack here before the boss will spawn. So this boss is what triggers his RP. Then you have the boss. Then you can jump down after the boss. Note all these guys over here actually disappear. See, they run away after you defeated the boss. So you can just jump down. Uh, instead of doing one guy guarding this bridge, I just recommend pulling in this pack over here with him lets you kill five mobs instead of one just more efficient there and then you can run across the bridge and do a pull here as well this is also something that is completely skippable if you can hug along this right side but it's pretty tight if you don't have like a shroud or a mind sooth and we all know pugs are extra thick so i just recommend pulling it anyways and then you can make your way along this area there's a bunch of yellow mobs here there's not really any benefit to pulling them there's like a very very minor percentage benefit for a couple of them but otherwise they're all like zero so if they join the pull great if not not a big deal you don't really need them at all for this route anyways you run along this area after you defeated this pull number six you can jump down and you can pull all these mobs here uh, there's a couple mobs over at the bar as well that aren't worth count and then i also recommend picking up this pat over here at number eight because they can come relatively close to the boss area and then you do the boss itself Notably also, this one comes kind of close as well, this uh, trapper pat. Up to you if you actually want to pull them or not. It's obviously you don't need the count, but if you want to be a little bit safer, uh, you could just pull them beforehand. Uh, otherwise, boss, and then you can walk around this way and pull 10, 11, 12. Uh, just note that this Iron Tide Crusher does kind of patrol this area, so you may need to pull 10 either back over the towards this way or forwards towards pull 11 depending on where that patrol is uh similar you can have someone start the rp as soon as possible like i mentioned uh, and then when this guy comes out you can pull some stuff on top of him because really the only person that's getting hit in the face relatively hard is your tank here uh, and these guys none of these guys actually hit your tank very hard either so it's it's pretty easy to do you just need to watch out for the turtle shells on top of like the things to dodge for the crusher uh, and then the ground effects from the crusher and then the brute as well for melee finish off the boss and then you can run back the way you came go across the bridge couple pulls over here uh, just watch this patrol while well, they might come into you so you may need to pull down a little bit or off to the side either way uh, and then of course you can do this pack right before the boss after you do the patrol something to note here a um, couple tips so one the barrage ability from the boss the cannon barrage this does actually deal damage to trash, so what you're likely going to see in coordinated groups is they're going to use that to their advantage and kill this pack.
However, what they will need to do first, and what you will need to do if you ever want to skip this pack, uh, is you will have to uh, have someone combat drop this pack. So similar to the last boss on Noku Defensive, if you want to use Season 1 as an example. So you can do a similar thing here if you want to. It obviously heavily limits your space. So in pug groups, just pull that pack. Trust me, uh, it's not worth the hassle. But maybe in high-end groups, you're going to see people skip it and then kill it after with the Cannon Barrage or just completely avoid it entirely. And that's my guess anyways. But there we have it, guys. That is my full guide for Freehold in Dragonflight Season 2. Hopefully, you found this video useful. And if you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like it, including my advanced Mythic Plus guides, which will be coming out for every single dungeon shortly after the season comes out. And we'll show off some tips and tricks for timing all of these dungeons on higher key levels. And of course, I will also be putting out Tank as well as Raid Boss guides for Abra, so just be on the lookout for all of those. If you have any questions about this dungeon, anything else, feel free to drop it down in the comments below, or you can stop by my Twitch channel at Tactics, where I stream high keys and mythic rating from a tank POV. I also want to quickly say thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon. Couldn't do this without you. Really appreciate each and every one of you. That's all for me, though. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.